time, I want to bring in Joseph Minerick, the conference board chief policy economist and former OMB chief economist under President Clinton. Joseph, you've heard everything that all of our guests have had to say here in the markets, turning positive today um, in reaction to that decision we just got about 25 minutes ago. So um, I want to get your thoughts on what you expect to hear from Fed Chair Powell when he takes the podium in a bit. Uh, the chairman is going to be asked about some of the questions that, that we've raised already. Uh, what is his horizon for quantitative easing? That's going to be a question he'll hear. Uh, what sensitivity does the Fed have to potential economic recovery? Uh, the forecast that we've seen clearly indicates that uh, the Fed believes that there's a lot of room for this economy to grow and it's going to take a while for it to recover. Uh, the reassurances that uh, you've seen in those forecasts suggest that you know, 2021 is, is off limits in terms of the Fed's plans at this point for increasing interest rates. I think he'll try to make clear that Given current data, the Fed believes that there's a lot of room to run with low interest rates, and he'll try to provide that kind of assurance to the markets. That's going to be high on his agenda. Joe, before the, the pandemic, though, the Fed was, I don't want to say struggling, but they were trying to figure out why inflation hadn't picked up more aggressively in the recovery from the Great Recession. So here we are in the pandemic. And some people are warning about inflation, but we're also seeing the words disinflation and deflation. Is there anything in the statement or do you expect Jerome Powell to say anything that would remove the fears of deflation or disinflation? That that problem is, of course, front and center in his agenda to get economic growth going again. Uh, the the a uh, weapon against deflation is economic growth. It's demand. Uh, what we're lacking in this economy is demand. Uh, I'm sure that when uh, the, the chairman tries to reassure the markets that the Fed is on the case, they understand the weakness that is out there. Uh, they anticipate keeping interest rates low. They are keeping their running room available with respect to quantitative easing. You know, all of that, I think, is trying to address any fears out there that may generate into uh, a deflationary process. And that, of course, is what they want to avoid at all costs. That's the problem that's very, very hard to solve. Um, and Joe, uh, Jerome Powell is set to go to Capitol Hill next week. I believe it is on Tuesday. Um, and to Adam's earlier point, um, there have been a lot of arguments out there that we do, in fact, need more fiscal stimulus. It's no secret that the Fed did come in swiftly and took a lot of decisive action. But in Powell's um, speech today, do you expect him to um, nudge the government and Congress to do a little more here? Uh, nudge is a really good word. Um, he is not going to elbow, he's not going to shove. Uh, he is going to make the point that, uh, I mean, thinking about the problems of inequality that you were talking about a moment ago, uh, the Federal Reserve has at its disposal tools that tend to raise asset prices and thereby uh, get economic growth going. Raising asset prices, of course, benefits those who own assets. Uh, when it comes to uh, policy changes that directly address the problems of people with modest resources, uh, that's the Congress's deal. Now, J Jay Powell is not going to want to get into the middle of a political argument. He is probably going to try to talk reason and suggest to the two sides that they ought to be thinking in those terms. Uh, that's a tricky job to do. Uh, he is, uh, I hope, up to the task. Uh, he's done very well so far in communicating with the Capitol Hill, and I suspect he'll, he's going to be exercising his talent in that direction again. Hey, Joe, real quick, on uh, this whole issue, whether it's fiscal stimulus coming from Congress or what I was asking about with inflation, I want to get back to that issue of going into this crisis, they still weren't getting the kind of inflation they wanted with economic growth and demand. 
Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, we're now in a stage where the only inflation story you can possibly tell has to do with the interruption of supply chains and increases in costs. We don't have a demand problem. Uh, it's just saying that uh, there's more pushing to do. Now, of course, pre-pandemic, you had to be more concerned that you were going to push too hard and you were actually going to knock some things over. Uh, now we don't have that problem. And uh, so the Fed is obviously working a lot harder. Um, they will be uh, less restrained and less concerned about the possibility of overdoing the process. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.